Community Matters here at the 11 o'clock block, 11 o'clock rock, with Jane Sugimura, a member of the Democratic Party. Uh, Jane, thanks for coming down today. It's very important that we talk to you about things Democratic. Yes, thank you for having me, and I'm always glad to talk about things Democratic. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> And so the first thing we, we really need to uh, talk about this at least a little bit is the Mark Takai funeral going on. Uh, he was a very popular guy. He was well-liked. I think part of the reason is he was a genuine, genuine human being, and he meant what he said, and he said what he meant, and he tried hard. He always tried hard. Yes, he uh, did. And, and he, uh, I lived in his district. In fact, when he ran, first ran for office, I was in his di district. I'm no longer in his district because of reapportionment, but he's, you know, he still represented the district in my part of town, IA Pro City. Yeah. So I've known him for a long, long time. What's, what's going on now with the funeral and the... Uh... Well, there was a public viewing yesterday at the state capitol, and uh, that was, uh, you know, live-streamed on the Internet, and uh, I, uh, I, I know many, many people went. And right now there's a funeral going on. I just came, you know, from visitation. And, you know, there were lots of people there. There were people from Congress, and uh, Senator Schatz was there, and Aaron Johansson, who you know is uh, who started off as a Republican uh, in the House of Representatives, but a very, very, very good friend of Mark Takai's. Mm, yeah. He's going to give a, one of the eulogies at the uh, funeral. They were very, very close. Yeah, you said Nancy Pelosi was here. Nancy Pelosi was here yesterday, and uh, one of the speakers at today's funeral is Tammy Duckworth. And I saw where a lot of congressional people uh, uh, were coming, and they they were already arriving as I was leaving. Remarkable. He was a young man. He was about 50, wasn't he? 49. 49. And he had two teenage children. Yeah. And so it's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I, I think it's, it's just another case with, um, what do you call it, um, pancreatic cancer. Right. Killing somebody so quickly. It went very fast. Uh, I was really shocked because um, uh, I was a supporter of Mark. Uh, I was there when he when he when he started his campaign for re-election in Congress. I think it was February, and there was a big party at a Oahu country uh, country club, and then he made the announcement in May. And 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 when we when he died, I mean, uh, two weeks ago, was it no, a month ago. Yeah. It was so fast. It was just a shock. Yeah. It, it, That's it, the way it, pancreatic yeah. cancer works. Very. It was very shocking. Remarkable that he achieved, uh, you know, the friends and connections that he did in Washington in a relatively short period of time. And, you know, I'm on the neighborhood board in IAEA, and so Mark was at all of our meetings Never. over all of the years. And one of the interesting things that we will all remember Mark for, and for people who serve on neighborhood boards or go to neighborhood board meetings, they will appreciate this. Mark was able to coordinate all highway and road repairs with the city and county. He, div he had a committee and anything that happened in IAEA, because we, we, you know, there were people who were grumbling. We have two roads in, 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 in IAEA. We have Cam Highway and we have Mauna Loa Road. And people couldn't understand why if the uh, electric company, uh, uh, the, the Board of Water Supply had to dig up a road you know, to fix a pipe and then they would, you know, they would repair it and then HECO would come and rip up the same road and do something with the electric. And it was like, why? Why can't you do it at the same time? Don't you guys talk to each other? And it was Mark who many, many years ago, you know, was hearing all of the complaining about all the different agencies ripping up the roads to do road work, who decided, well, you know, this is silly. You know, we, we have the, the means to get the city and the county and the state and everybody to get together and and work together to say, okay, we're going to do this repair. Who has to go in? And everybody work together and go in and do the repairs. And you fix, and that way you inconvenience the community only once, right? Instead of inconveniencing them multiple times while multiple agencies and whatever have to go in and rip up the roads and fix them up again. He was a good guy. He uh, was. And he, was and a, he was a friend of Think Tank. He appeared on Think Tank a number of times. Uh, in, in both the state jobs and the federal job, and uh, he was he was good to us. Uh, he he appeared early in our evolution, and so uh, he he believed in us, and I certainly appreciated that from him. Anyway, let's move on to uh, your experience in Philadelphia. Oh, that yes. is, if you hadn't noticed, it was the city. It is the city of brotherly love. Yes. Um, uh, and, and it was a strange uh, convention, wasn't it? Well. Um 
it is a city of brotherly love, and I think Philadelphia, you know, did did uh, welcome uh, uh, the uh, delegates, uh, and you know, put on quite an affair uh, uh, for for the delegates. Uh, I know the the opening night affair was at the art museum, and people uh, who have seen the Ro Rocky movies might remember the stairway <laughs> where Rocky runs up. <laughs> you know, that's the, uh, the Philadelphia uh, Museum of Art. And they had an, an extraordinary event there on uh, welcoming day to welcome the delegates. And so they had people playing music, the art museum was open, and the docents were uh, taking people around. It was just, a, and the, they had food. Uh, all these various um, uh, uh, food vendors, and they had rock music outside, classical music inside. So you had the violins inside, you had the the rap and whatever outside, and you had the mimes on the, course, on the stairways. Of <laughs> <laughs> it, and it was just beautiful. It was just a very and, and, the, and the weather was beautiful that day. Uh, most of the other days, it was either very very humid and muggy or thunder showers. Now you went as a staff member of, of the Hawaii delegation. Yes, I did. And, um, you know, what was it like from your point of view? I mean, was, was uh, everything as good under the hood as, as it was to public appearance? Uh, well, I think so. We had a, the, 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 and I have been to several national conventions. The thing that I'll was... I'll vouch for you on that. Yeah. The, the, Every the, single one that I can remember, as a matter of fact. This, um, this one was different because we had a lot of new people who had never been to a national convention mm. before. And these were the Bernie Sanders delegates. Ah, and so they had enough clout to get in. Oh, yes. I they mean, were they won. persuasive in the party so they could get into the con convention. Right. We choose our delegates uh, through a process that's um, uh, authorized by the uh, Democratic National Committee. And so we do it like a year ahead of time. It's called the Delegate Selection Plan. And uh, we had our caucuses in March of this year. And the Bernie Sanders people, they mobilized and they were able to get 70%. I remember that. 70%. It was, it was a phenomenon that they right, got 70% of the caucus vote. Well, right. And, and yet, and yet, when it came time to really step up, they, they had already, you know, dissolved. Well, no, we, at, at our state convention, they were there. I mean, we had over a thousand people at our state convention, yeah, a thousand yeah, delegates. And, and at, at a our lot of them were Bernie supporters. Bernie Sanders, and they were able to uh, elect the party chair. Are they still powerful? Well, they're not as active anymore. Uh, I mean, uh, we had an event in Kailua the, that the party usually participates in, and there were some precincts that had the Bernie Sanders people who were elected, and they didn't, you know, get involved. And um, that's too bad. Yeah, that, that is. That means it's kind of ephemeral, which I, I mean, sure, Bernie wants better than that. We all want better than that. We want to see them continue and uh, keep, you know, keep, keep, keep on. Uh, but but uh, what about in the convention itself? Um, were they instrumental in the votes? Were they instrumental in uh, devising platform Well, you know, points? prior prior to the convention, the uh, the Democratic Party, uh, the Democratic National Committee, have these meetings regard you know to establish the platform and the rules that are going to govern the the uh, the 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 race and the platform that uh, n the now. Uh, uh, candidate Hillary Clinton has to defend and uh, advocate for, and uh, Bernie uh, Bernie Sanders uh, because he had uh, the 1900 delegates uh, was able to effectuate change on the platform. She, she bought into a lot of it. She had to buy into it because you know uh, uh, she he had that that many uh, people, and so uh, she she they were able to negotiate. Uh, with the Hillary Clinton campaign, and they, I guess, I, I understand they managed to get most everything in except the uh, issue about the trade plans. I yeah. think that was the only one that they didn't uh, negotiate. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, he would not have been able to do that but for the fact that he had a substantial number of delegates at the convention. <coughs> Did and you see the Hawaii Bernie Sanders guys in action? Did you see them involved in the negotiation? How did they express themselves? Well, I, I don't think they were involved in the negotiations, but um, I mean, because all of this happens before you get to the 
uh, convention, mm. and uh, the the entire convention votes on it, and uh, that happened on Monday, and that happened with a little bit of angst. I mean, there were some demonstrations and protests uh, outside. Uh, no, inside oh, and outside, outs inside oh. and, and and outside. And who was demonstrating and protesting? Uh, the Bernie Sanders people. Ah, okay. And they 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 were you know uh, I, I they they had some issues. Uh, even though Bernie Sanders had uh, publicly declared for uh, Hillary Clinton. And in fact... They the, the, were not completely convinced of that. Th well, I think they were um, disappointed. And a lot of them, this was their first political foray. And first time they got involved in a political party, the first time they didn't been like to, to see him capitulate. Right, and for those of us who have been, you know, party members for a long time, we've been through disappointments, and you know <laughs> that you just have to start all over again yeah. and you know work harder. Now, than, what about the lady with the finger? Ah, uh, that well, that's now, an issue. There she was in the national press with the finger, uh, right in the middle <laughs> of the Hawaii delegation. Well, what was going on there? Well. First of all, the people who were in the picture really didn't know about it. and, and, and <laughs> They the, didn't see what she was doing. No, they didn't see what she was doing. I mean, <laughs> Senator Schatz and Maisie Hirona were in front of her, and Governor John Waihe was kind of like on the side. And, and, um, and in fact, we, the, they didn't really know about it. We were driving home. There, a bunch of us, you know, were driving home. We didn't go in the bus with the delegates, but we were in a car. And uh, Governor John was getting a text from his wife, wanting to know what the hell was going on, basically. <laughs> and, and then somebody else was in the car. They were getting texts from Hawaii. To, What's going on? And why, why are we on national television with, with this obscene gesture? And we're, we're passing the phone around. Thinking, oh, my goodness. This is how we found out. And um, it, it, was, it was a shock. It was kind of like an emb embarrassment. It was... Um, and you know the but chair doesn't speak of solidarity that's for sure well no but and 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 the chair did take action uh uh where he uh gave that delegate a choice of apologizing at, or you know turning in her credentials and she wouldn't apologize so she gave up her credentials and left and le no she stayed for the convention she just didn't was not allowed on the floor yeah. we understood she stayed yeah okay and um uh, but you know, she—I uh, didn't see her anymore that week uh, in in our in our events. Yeah, well, but now, I was, what, was her, what was her point in that? And she, I mean, I know she wrote an op-ed piece for the uh, Star Advertiser a week later. But what was her point in, in the, the, making the gesture there on the floor? Just before the convention began in Philadelphia, I think there was a hacking of the DNC, and there were some emails that were uh, disclosed. And that showed that the DNC favored Hillary's campaign over Bernie Sanders. And that led to the resignation of Debbie um, Wasserman Sch Schmidt, yeah. uh, who was a DNC chair. And so uh, my understanding is uh, the delegate was mad at the DNC. Why she chose to make the obscene gesture uh, during the time when, you know, uh, the Hawaii delegation was on national television during the roll call doesn't really make any sense. If she's mad at the DNC, she should go and march in front of the DNC with her obscene gesture, you yeah. know, yeah, not, yeah, not do it yeah. in, a, in a group, yeah. you know, that represents <clears throat> the state uh, and that, you know. Right, and it's on national television, so our image is there. Right. Well, we're not going to do that here in Think Tech. We're not even going to show you what the obscene gesture is <laughs> or was. But we will take a break. We'll come back. Maybe we can do it during the break, Jane. <laughs> Aloha. My name is John Waihe'e. And I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at KauiLucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me 
this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Bingo. So you were there among the delegation mm -hmm. from Hawaii at, at, the, at the floor uh, in the city of brotherly love uh, three weeks ago, I guess. Um, what was it like and what was the delegation like? Uh, the delegation, you know, usually, you know, there's camaraderie, so, you know, everybody kind of got along, but we didn't see a whole lot of the Bernie people, and I, I was told it was because they couldn't afford to stay in the hotels, and so they were staying other places. You know those Bernie people. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, and, and uh, for some reason, our congressional people didn't stay in our hotel. Usually, and, you know, our hotel, for one thing, was way outside. We were an hour away from the city. No kidding. We were wow. in Valley Forge. Well, it has historical significance. Right. So, so I can see why maybe the congressionals might want to stay in town because, you know, that way. But, but typically, you know, we, we're all kind of like in the same place. I mean, in years past. In years yeah. past. Yeah. In the, the, the congressional. Did that have an effect on your ability to communicate with no, them? No. I mean, because we would get together for caucuses and they would show up at the convention. The congressionals would be there. And, um, uh, you know, and, and I think overall, the, you know, the, 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 there was a, a, a good uh, mix of people who, who, you know, stayed together. I know the Bernie Sanders people had events during the day. And Their own events. Own events. Uh, the protests in the park and things like that. And, it's so and strange. You know, usually, you know, I, I would assume that uh, you go to a, a convention like this, everybody's on the same page. Right. And, and in Hawaii, with the Democratic Party is king. Everybody's on the same page, right? And you go there, and it's really uh, we know what we're going to vote for. We right. we know our position on things, but in this case, it wasn't like that at all. No? Right. Well, you know, there there were these protest groups that that you know had their events, and and so so I'm not saying that the, all the Bernie delegates went to those. I mean, and they went to other events because the, the the various caucuses met at convention center the women's caucus the lgbt caucus the labor caucus so if anybody was interested in any of them they could attend those those meetings but these caucuses were about platform points i right. assume they were but the, you said the platform points were decided before the convention ever met right so what's the point well they have uh, other issues that they want to pursue and you know they have members that you know they want to lobby with and to get, and you know basically the first two days of the election is political right after the roll call well, which was political what do you mean by that? political about who's going to be the national uh, candidate the selecting leaders s selecting leaders yeah. so, you know voting for the platform <clears throat> and then the the after you know you have the roll call and the per person is nominated to be the national candidate the rest of the three days is a political advertisement be, you know, and for the to, world, for the world, mm -hmm. and to rally the troops and get them all ready, excited. all excited to go back to their homes and get ready to campaign for the candidate. Yeah, so that's what did it that is. happen? Was, yes. Did that make your blood run faster? Yes. Uh, I mean, what do you think of her speech, of Bill Clinton's speech? What do you? I think? thought all those speeches were, you know, very, uh, you know, very good. And you know, this was the first time I can remember. We, Nevada was behind us, and Nevada, for some reason, were very raucous. And, and for some reason, <laughs> some reason, they kept chanting, no more war. And I don't understand why they were chanting that no more war, because there weren't people up there talking about war. And so we were getting text it messages. Like chanting at the uh, Republican National Convention, you know, put Hillary in jail or whatever they yeah. were saying. <laughs> so we were getting text messages. And this is something new, right? We were getting text messages saying, when they chant this, then you chant this. And so you have... Competitive know, chanting. Competitive <laughs> chanting. <laughs> <laughs> so so that that's the the the, the no, new norm i mean so yeah. now you don't you know because it's loud and noisy yeah, yeah, in the convention yeah, yeah. so when you talk to people sometimes you have to yell but now you don't have to yell yeah. you can just text well, that's, and, that's that's you know that's a lesson you know in the past you know these chants you thought they they rose spontaneously for a group of people somebody came up with a good chant somebody else heard it and now you have a lot of people chanting no doesn't work that way anymore. No, it's all it's all social media, the right. cell phone. Yeah, we, you, you the get text the text message. saying when they say no more war, you chant this, <laughs> and so you know, so so everybody was pointing to their phones, and then you do the the, the counter chant, yeah. and and so it was it was it was fun, and but you know, and what we heard is the very last day, the Bernie people were wearing these yellow T-shirts that said enough is enough or something like that, and we were told they were going to walk out. Uh, of oh, the convention. No, that would have been very disruptive for the, the Very whole disruptive for the Hillary uh, uh, and very disrespectful on the very last day. And, you know, I have to give credit to our group 
They, what they did is they said, you know, we really don't, you know, we're going to work for Hillary, but, you know, we really don't want to go and listen to the speech. They turned over their credentials so that the family members of the other delegates could attend that last night. Oh, good. So, yeah, you know. That's fair. Yeah, so, so if they didn't want to go, that's fine. And, and, and you know, one of the delegates, uh, the, the Bernie delegates, wrote a nice message to um, the executive director of, the, uh, of our group. And she basically thanked us for, you know, making the, uh, her, her first national uh, uh, convention uh, an enjoyable event, that she was disappointed that her candidate, that Bernie Sanders, you know, didn't become the, the national candidate. Really? But she was grateful for the opportunity to, to come, and they were going to go home all energized and work to elect Hillary yeah, Clinton. Yeah. And so, you know, to me, that's, that's a positive. Yeah, well, that's you got to be. make the best action you can with the circumstances. Right. Know? And and that's a good attitude. And you know, you were talking young people. He, these are the, these are college kids. Well, and yeah, it, but Bernie's going to come back, don't you think? And I mean, he, and, he, and he, I think that this is a credit to Bernie. I mean, I like Bernie Sanders. I liked some of the stuff he you said. Mean? He did. He came to our came to our caucus on the last day. Bernie Sanders came to our to, and, and we were at a hotel. At our hotel, we were there with uh, West Virginia, North and South Dakota, Utah. And I think Wyoming or Idaho, one of those states. But anyway, he came to our caucus, and he was a big hit. And he 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 was very very insightful. And he thanked his his. There were a lot of Bernie people in the room, and he thanked his uh, his supporters. And you know, his very last day. Even I mean, on the roll call, I have to give Bernie Sanders credit because when I saw I was there, and then Vermont deferred, and I figured, okay, something is going well, on. What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? And they waited for the very last. And I, I thought, okay, now they're going to make the motion. This way, Bernie Sanders delegates were able to register their votes, at least to in take... In a more powerful way. No, they, they were... In uh, favor of Hillary. No, no, they registered their votes for Bernie. They were allowed to do that. And then at the end, he was going to do this gesture, or the state was oh, going to... turn do, over the votes. Do a Hillary. unified vote for Hillary. Is that what happened? A and it did. And it was him who made the motion. And I thought that was very honorable. It was cool, yeah. I remember very that, yeah. cool that what, he did that. What about Hillary? I mean, Hillary has suffered some slings and arrows lately. Uh, and some people say that at the convention, you know, in, in order to accommodate the Bernie people, um, she, she made you know, the tent too big. She accepted everybody's position about everything. It's hard to do that. And, um, you know, maybe some of the other side, you know, didn't like it too much when she capitulated to the Bernie people. Well, you know, the Democrats have always bragged about we have, we're a, we have a big tent and we fight. I mean, we historically, we fight amongst each other. But, you know, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, we come together and, you know, and sometimes we're, you know, we, you know, reluctantly vote the way we do, but we stick together. You know, because we all believe in certain basic principles. And I, I think the fact that, you know, she is advocating this broad tent is a good thing. You know, because, I mean, we, we, sh we should invite, you know... She softened her position on a number of things. She yeah. did. And it was due to the fact that Bernie Sanders demonstrated that there were people out there who cared very strongly for s these ideas and these principles and these policies. And so she, you know, it, so she has to listen if she's going to be representing them, you know, as the candidate. Is she now? I, think I mean, she, is, is it at peace now where everybody under the tent agrees that, uh, you know, she's the, she's the candidate of choice for I don't think so. There, there are some Bernie people who at the National Convention were holding signs for, I think, the Green candidate, Dr. Jill. I don't know what her name was, but I, I know I saw the signs. And I'm told that there are some people who... And there are complaints filed with the local Oahu County Committee really? against certain Bernie Sanders uh, people because they represent, I mean, they're, they're, they're campaigning for the Green candidate. Yeah. So the essential party, though, the core party here in Hawaii, how, how is it affected by all of this? Is it strong? Uh, is it stronger or weaker? Is it, uh, I think how I, is it getting along with the millennials, you know? I, I, think, I, think, I think we're in this uh, transition period, and, and we do have more members. We do have more members, and I think if, if the convention demonstrates anything, it means that we're getting along. I mean, we don't hate each other. Except with the 
woman, woman with the finger. Well, no, uh, uh, she's she's still in the party, I guess. Uh, and although people have filed complaints against her, I, I don't know what her status is going to be. Yeah. Uh, I think people are saying that if she doesn't like it, she should resign. Yeah. But, um, you know, um, like I said, we have a broad tent. I mean, and, you know, we, we invite everybody and we can fight amongst ourselves. And So this was not all that disruptive to the... I, I don't think so, general, and, and it's part of the growing pains. It, it, what it does is it, it means that you've got a younger generation coming in, and they think differently. So, so, and the party, well, they think more to the liberal side, I guess, because of the, and, the and you have influence. to you have to accommodate. You know, you, yeah, you need yeah. to learn to accommodate. But what because about what about that's the, the problem future. of one party? I mean, is that does this help that problem? Because I mean, some some people firmly believe that we have a sort of a, a, a fatal flaw here. We have one party in the state running everything, and it responds to the unions. Um, and so we really don't have two hands clapping on anything. And the decisions are made in the back room instead of, you know, in an open, uh, an open conversation between two separate two hands clapping. Um, and so I, I really wonder uh, how this whole affair with the Bernie people and what happened in Philadelphia affects that. Well, I don't. What I what I think is what it shows is that you know we're a dynamic party, and we are flexible. And you know the thing about this back room, if there were if there were back room deals, there wouldn't be these lawsuits between <laughs> UPW and the state of Hawaii about the privatization of uh, the Maui, Maui hospitals. Hospital. <laughs> you know, so you know the thing about the back room deals, I think, is 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 a fiction. And uh, there is, you know, the, the, there's not always agreement between the unions uh, and the Democratic uh, elected. And what it is, is what, the, what, what it is, is the connection is access. They support Democratic candidates. I mean, that doesn't mean that they get what they want, but they have access. They have access to elected officials and, you know, and maybe more than a stranger. Mm -hmm. Because they're the, the, you know, they have supported the Democrats. Because in general, Democrats have supported the labor movement historically. Well, they've you know, people have also expressed concern about the fact that whatever the system is, it doesn't yield um, uh, candidates who run against other candidates. And we have had several um, elections uh, in the you know, campaigns in the uh, I guess the primary mm -hmm. where it was unopposed. Mm -hmm. Several. I mean, for important positions, unopposed. And whatever your party is, uh, even in a primary, you know, you want to see some, you want to see some, 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 some action there. You want to see new people come up, you know. And, and, and this disappointment, if I can use that word, is that the millennials and the Bernie people who, you know, have a lot to offer and who are thinking and acting and, you know, active at the convention, why don't they run for office? What's holding them back? They have. Uh, there are several who ran for office, uh, and they, you know, were in the primaries. Uh, they didn't. I don't think. I can't think of any who ran who won their races. But the thing uh, is, is they participated. Okay, so now they got their feet wet. Now they know the process. And I think what they have to do is they now know. I mean, they have to go out and work just like everybody else, to get people registered, to make sure they get out to the polls. And I was just as disappointed as you when I saw those numbers coming up on Saturday. 34 percent. 30, yeah, terrible. 34. Yeah, that's terrible. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, it's, that's terrible. And I, and I agree with you. I mean, that, that's, that's, you know, that's a terrible reflection on the, the people here. That, what that means is that they're either satisfied with what the status quo or they don't care, which I, I don't know which is worse. You know, yeah, and yeah. but but it is. It's very disturbing. That's something we all have to work on. Yeah, that's something we all have to work on. Yeah, and think take a work on that. I mean, you know, I think I think we have to remind people that they, in um, as citizens in a, a democratic society. I don't mean democratic party. I mean a democratic society. They, they have obligations, and they have to connect with the government. They have to vote at the very least. Jane, thank you so much for coming around. Well, thank will you for having me. Will you come around again and talk story with me again? Yes. 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 That's Jane Sugimura, my, my law partner and also a, a great supporter of uh, Think Tech, and she's associated also with Kano Insider. We'd love to have her come around. Thank you, Jane.